Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Lucia Aquino, and I am with Hispano Care, a program of Advocate Illinois Masonic Hospital and affiliated with Gottlieb Memorial Hospital in Melrose Park. You are watching a live interactive show today and is brought to you by Can TV Cable 21. During the next 25 minutes, we are going to be discussing senior services. With me today is Jeffrey Bashar, president of Come Comfort Senior Services, Comfort Care Senior Services. <laughs> and we invite you to call in with any questions that you may have. The number is at the bottom of your screen. That's 312-738-1060. Our phone lines are now open. Welcome and thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Lucy. Well, this is great. I know we have a lot of interesting information that we want to share today with our viewers. So I, I want to start by asking, uh, saying <laughs> that uh, the Comfort, Senior, Comfort Care Senior Services is a premier provider of private duty home care services for people of all ages. And you're dedicated in helping to make life easier for those coping with a chronic medical condition, recovering from an illness or injury, or dealing with challenges of aging and the comfort of individuals own homes correct and I know there's a difference there between these types of services and health care services so what is the difference between home care and health care services I, I want to make sure that our viewers know the difference between those two things well sure be happy to answer that um, health care is pretty much what it sounds like it's services it's medical treatment that is covered by a doctor's prescription and as such, it's then covered by medical insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, depending on the kind of programs that you're on. Um, home care is a little different in that it's not covered by prescriptions. It helps, it helps the recipients of the care more with what's considered activities of daily living, which is everything from light housekeeping and chores to cooking and cleaning, transportation services, medication reminders. It, it's what's done every day to make life easier just to do your daily, uh, your daily activities. And unlike health care services, which is covered by Medicaid and Medicare mm -hmm. and private insurances, these particular home care services are not. Can we talk a little bit about that, sure. Jeffrey? Sure, definitely. Um, this is predominantly private pay, which means you pay for it out of your own pocket. Now, there are long-term care insurance policies in place that will pay for that if you've, if you've opened up those policies prior to needing the care. Uh, also, in cases if, if, if you've been hurt on the job or in an auto accident, um, during the settlements and during insurance insurance that covers those settlements, oftentimes mm -hmm. that's provisions for that are included in okay. those plans as well. Okay. So, so again, it's Medicare, Medicaid do not cover these types of services. Correct. But insurance is made depending on long-term care. Depending on long-term care and the circumstances, if it happened, if you need the care as a result of an accident or some other. Okay. External now, action. I know, I, can you give us a <clears throat> couple of examples of a typical client? And I, I kind of like to walk through the scenario so that our viewers know exactly what it is we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And what's wonderful to see, though, is that many of these services are popping up all over the country. Yes. And it's a much needed service, by the way. I mean, usually I know we've had members and or community members who actually are looking for care and Medicare doesn't cover it. But yet they're willing to pay for it but just to have someone to come out and help them out in the home. So can you walk us through a typical client? Sure. A couple of examples? Sure. Well, uh, the typical client uh, that we run into, is, is let's focus on senior citizens, are, are folks that just through aging and through um, dis some diseases and conditions they get as they age, find it difficult to do their daily activity routines, as we talked about a little earlier. Okay. Um, so whether it's help with the house cleaning chores, uh, cooking. Uh, they don't have loved ones to take them to doctor's appointments or, or out for a walk in the park or, or, or mm -hmm. just to go out mm -hmm. to the mall. Um, all the way through to something a little more hands-on, which might be feeding, and mm -hmm. uh, you need help with uh, progressively with feeding, uh, toileting perhaps, grooming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, bathing and dressing. Um, so over that continuum, that's one type of, of client that might need our care. Okay. And the other one is someone who perhaps is an, of any age, actually, who might be coming out of a hospital or, or out of, for a treatment, mm -hmm. a surgery of some sort, where they then go home. Mm -hmm. And then maybe for a few weeks or a month, uh, anywhere from a week to a month, might need some care at home um, afterwards because they can't do those kind of activities we just discussed, like cooking or chores. They can't lift. They can't do things like that. Now, you, you did mention that to go to the mall, go for a walk. So are, is it this then, this service here, is one of those services that can you hire or in this case bring somebody in 
Not mm-hmm. for the entire week, not for the entire day, but a few hours at a time if needed? Yeah. Yes. Our service is actually, um, we can we can bring someone out for as little as one hour, mm-hmm. all the way up through 24-hour 24 uh, hour shifts and, and or live-ins. So we run a so full range. So you also provide live-in, live-ins as well? Yes, we do. Wow. So, and this is not just at home, but at nursing homes if need be? Yes. If they need someone to be there for them at all times? Yes. And that, and often that's, you know, while this is called home care, home is actually where the client is. Right. So it could be in their home. It could be where they live in an independent living community. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they need a little bit extra help to stay in that independent living community mm-hmm. all the way through to a nursing home. Uh, because as, you, as we know, uh, however good a nursing home might be, there's no individual staff member dedicated to the one person. Right, right. So they could be there. Now, I did mention that, that, as we both know, many of these types of services are actually popping up everywhere. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for it. So we can talk a little <clears throat> bit about why this prompted this particular service here in Illinois, for example. Or in this case, your company such as yours. Right. So basically, you know, why we why, why, why it's cropping up all I mean, over. Why sure, it certainly. All over the place? Certainly. Well, in, in Chicago, let's take Chicago as an example since we are the third largest metropolitan area in the country. Okay. Um, service has been around here for quite a while, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good bridge because, um, because it, it's not covered by insurance. Mm-hmm. So people need the help. That our population is aging, as everyone mm-hmm. knows. People want to stay at home or in wherever they call their place of residence, and they want to age in place with dignity and mm-hmm. respect. And this helps. This helps keep keep those folks at home. Also, peace of mind uh, for loved ones, especially if they're children or nieces, nephews, mm-hmm. the younger generation who might not live in Chicago anymore. Maybe they've moved, mm-hmm. but their parents or aunt and uncle live here. It provides that level of service for them here. And what a wonderful security to have too. To know mm-hmm. that that you can actually call a program or organization such as yours that can provide that type of security. Mm-hmm. It, it used to be as, where do I leave my parents? How do I get them help? How can I fly back home? And all these issues that still arise today. And yet now there is a service that's available 24-7. And this is just one of many that are out there internationally. I, even internationally, I think they're going. Because I know in Puerto Rico now, even mm-hmm. in Puerto Rico, for example, they're opening up more and more nursing homes that it was unheard of before. And these things are popping up there as well. Sure. I know Comfort Care, we actually have a few uh, Canadian offices. So wow. it, it is uh, cross borders. So you, you are cross borders. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your staff? Sure. Uh, at being in Chicago mm-hmm. and, and being where we're located, uh, we have uh, we have a very multicultural staff. We have staff that speaks Tagalog, uh, Russian, Polish, Spanish. Uh, we have uh, Korean as well. Mm. Uh, also some Vietnamese. Oh, great! So you're multilingual and multicultural. Multi, multilingual, multicultural. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike uh, some others, unlike most in this field, we don't hire only CNAs, which are basically, which are, depending on the nomenclature, certified nurses assistants right. or certified nurses aides, depending okay. on who's calling them. And they do have, uh, they do go through a certification program, which. Uh, which, which gives them uh, a background in healthcare. Okay. They do clinicals in nursing facilities and hospitals. Okay. So we're already starting with a base of, uh, of caregiver that already has a good education and a foundation mm-hmm. in healthcare, as well as work experience in the field. That's great. Well, well, let me talk a little bit about, I know that there are accredited CNAs. Mm-hmm. On top of that, <clears throat> you're also doing more than that. Yes. We have a ten, we have a ten step hiring process, mm-hmm. and, and not to go through every step here, but the important steps mm-hmm. are obviously proficiency and training. So we have three different types of written tests that they go through to prove proficiency and training. Mm-hmm. We do both a state and national criminal background check, sex offender background check, and drug check, mm-hmm. uh, just to make sure that uh, these are the people we want to want them in our home. We don't want to have them Absolutely. work in someone else's Absolutely. home. Absolutely. So uh, so we work we work through that way. If the caregiver drives, we do it, uh, we do it. A complete Department of Motor Vehicles check to make sure their driving record is safe okay. and that they're insured. Um, so we we go quite deep into the qualification backgrounds as opposed to just put uh, placing a caregiver in someone's home because that person might have cared for a grandparent at some right. point in their life and that's right. all their experience. Well, I think it's really important, especially if someone's driving, <laughs> if they're yes. driving someone who's elderly or ill or needs assistance with a wheelchair or something like that. You want to make sure that they're driving well. Course. Absolutely. Now, one of the things you didn't mention, and I know you do, oh. is the ethics part of it. Oh, that's huge. Yes. You're right. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, ethics is a huge part of it because obviously we have people that, that, that are, are spending hours in our clients' homes. And we screen 
for drugs. We screen for. Uh, we, we actually drug test. Mm -hmm. uh, we we check criminal background, the the, the criminal background aspect of the person's uh, background and their credentials, but we get to know them ethically. We 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 have a a very uh, a very in depth. Mm -hmm. um, ethics tests that we do give right. them uh, and they have to pass in order to be able to right. be on board. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. I do want to remind our viewers that with me today is Jeffrey Bashar. Did I get that right? You got it right. <laughs> President of Comfort Care Senior Services and we invite you to call with any questions that you may have. The telephone number is on the bottom of your screen, area code 312-738-1060 for any questions that you may have for Mr. Bashar or myself. For his spinal care and community health. I want to go to what are some of the um, questions. I know that when we're, you know, whether it's myself or you or anyone else actually looking for these types of services or services in general, there's always questions to ask. Sure. And there's always a host of them. And a lot of times when we're out there looking for these types of services or just for general information, there's certain questions that we should ask. Can we go over those questions? questions that some clients looking for new caregivers should be asking. Of course. Um, the first question should be asked is what kind of experience do you have? I mean that and, and that's that's probably the biggie that most people take for granted but they don't ask. Mm -hmm. um, again I, I, I go back to saying that if they have no experience or they've only experienced without training uh, perhaps taking care of a loved one, a grandmother, a grandfather, um, that's not a lot of experience. It's right. not necessarily relevant right. experience. Right. So that, that's the first question. Second questions are what are your qualifications? It's a dovetail into the first que with the first mm -hmm. question, um, but specifically we're looking for training uh, okay. as in a certified nursing assistant or a nursing degree of some sort, um, any kind of accreditations that they have because as we know our, our seniors today especially are, they suffer from multiple conditions and afflictions at this, mm -hmm. you know, in, to, in today's day and age right. and it certainly helps helps to have that kind of uh, training. Mm -hmm. um, what is the advanced training? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have proficiency in, in, in Alzheimer's, dementia, um, heart conditions, arthritis? Uh, mm -hmm. If so, what are they? Um, and uh, what we check for, criminal record, come flat out and ask, do you have a criminal record? Mm -hmm. um, because that will show in background checks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, do you have a knowledge of, of any specific condition that I, the receiver, the recipient of the care might have? Okay. So if, if we know that uh, if, if, if you have a heart condition, you know, does the caregiver, when you're interviewing, does the caregiver have experience with heart patients? Right. 